director, Daniel Scheinert, and the great Virginia Newcomb. Okay. Have you ever seen the music videos by David Wilson? No. It's a, he's a friend of mine. He's great. I didn't realize your middle name was David. David it is. David Wilson. It is. Now I have to look that up. Yeah, he's great. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, this is a really, this is a film that I think everyone is lucky to see now because this is a film you want to see before someone tells you all about it and ruins it. Um, this is a film, the less you know, the better. And I know that you just came from a triumphant screening at Fantastic Fest. Um, just, I guess, let's start with the beginning. So how did you uh, come to this? For those that don't know, uh, Daniel is... This is his second feature, uh, but this is your first feature as a solo director, correct? Yeah, it's like 1.5th. Right, right. The last one was a little film called um, Swiss Army Man. That I did half of that. <laughs> yes, but this is your first as a solo director, so just talk us through how um, this film came about. Yeah, um... Uh, Billy, who wrote this, is uh, one of my closest friends from college, uh, and so I I solo directed this, but it really felt like instead of making a movie with my best friend Dan Kwan, I, I went and made a movie with my other best friend, Billy Chu, uh, and he just wrote this kind of autobiographical piece <laughs> that I thought was moving, <laughs> and I learned a lot about my friend Billy. <laughs> Um, I thought it was really brave, uh, but he no he uh, he wrote this right after college and like and and I loved it and and I had r I've read drafts of it for years and been his biggest fan, um, and he wrote it while living in Alabama, which is where I'm from, but not where he's from, and so he would he would constantly call me and be like, Alabama's awesome, like everybody I work with at Panera Bread is so weird, um, <laughs> and. Uh, and um, the opportunity came up to like maybe try to put this movie together and make it a few years ago. And Billy, uh, Billy was like, I don't really want anyone else to direct it. I want you to do it. Um, and I was at the time really exhausted after Swiss Army Man and, and thought this seemed like a really fun change of pace to do something that wasn't, um, that I didn't write and that wasn't all about visual effects and uh, being inside someone's uh, subjective brain. Um, and then and then we approached A24 and they said yes and I was like all right I guess we're making it yeah um, fantastic I mean this is I can see obviously the appeal after Swiss Army Man this seems like a very different kind of film to make and yet there's some obvious connections between the two dead uh, bodies yes dead bodies and men having a crisis because of a dead body that they're very they're right next to and it yeah. sort of creates this thing they have to go through and they're sort of carrying the body around but in different ways. Anything you want to say about that? Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to explain it to my parents and uh, <laughs> but then I realized my Aunt Vicky has been collecting funny obituaries her like my whole life and it'd be like you know like the whole family would get like an email from Aunt Vicky and she'd be like look at this one um, and so I guess it's kind of her fault you know like like uh, morbid humor has always kind of hit home for me more than, you know, puns. Death and mortality is really in a lot of Southern artists' work and maybe more in a macabre sense, but I just am realizing that yours is just the other side of the coin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why Why do we... Just why is activity. death and mortality so Southern? I don't know. I don't know, but it is, right? I, I mean, I love graveyards. I love cemeteries. That's it. That leads me to my next question. Um, <laughs> so you are both natives of Alabama, and I wanted you to both talk about, well, I think you've already sort of touched on it, Daniel, but uh, Virginia, and by the way, as you know, this is, I think, a, a, a film, I'm really curious to see what happens when the audience sort of gets to it, because I think there's a definitely an audience that maybe is coming from Swiss Army Man that's expecting um, a certain experience, and sure, there's laughs, and sure, there's fun, but I, I think it's a really interesting film because there is sort of, it, it's, this is a film that doesn't condescend completely to its characters. Like, the characters 
um, these are human beings and you do even if they are funny at times and we like you know the, some of their music choices are, are laughable we still are they feel like real people um, but I but I love and I love the music choices too because they are like you could have done a lot you know more sort of dumb guy music and this there's I love the th through line that these are songs that are about emotions you know and then feelings and even in this sort of manly way that we, we snicker at some of us but I mean it's like there's there's a there's an emotion to those those songs that I think is really an interesting tells you a lot about it so I really think it's a it's a, a very interesting follow-up and you know I really commend you for this and I think it, it kind of comes out of you coming from that place and I want to say also to Virginia, um, you know, this is a terrific performance and definitely you're like the moral center of the film. You really have to like, you, you carry a lot of this film on your back and it's a ter terrific performance. I've been, the reviews I've read all often single you out. So could you tell me about your, how you came to the perform uh, to the, to the piece and how, then what you brought to the performance? Oh man. Yeah, I can. So, um, I don't know if I've said this to you, so this will be fun, but I, so this guy's kind of a hometown hero, but I didn't know you as as I know. But I but okay. So quick trajectory. I was out here in LA for a little over a decade, doing this whole thing. We'll 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 make that part short. But I started getting. <laughs> we'll talk about this another time. But I started getting more work and being drawn to the work that was happening in the in the South. And so I've been working in the back in the South and from Alabama for the last few years. And I guess like, uh, I'd seen Swiss Army Man, and then um, more people were like, yeah, yeah, you know Daniel's a local. I'm like, oh cool. So I started looking you up more and like watched their music videos, and I was like, I'm gonna work with this weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> this is before you auditioned? And like months before I auditioned. Oh, wow. Yeah, so like, sorry, I you wasn't as happen. familiar with you as everyone else. <laughs> Apologize in that story. <laughs> I know. I just wanted to say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, and then, yeah, I a few things, a uh, few people, I think, pointed me towards Daniel, and um, he auditioned me for every role in the movie, which yeah. was so fun. And then I eventually made my way to to Lydia, um, which I do feel like was the right role for me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, can we say? Yeah, do you know that someone else was attached? Uh, I, I have heard, yes. We're going to just, know who? We're gonna just <laughs> bring it all out here tonight. Do you know who? Uh, maybe. Maybe I won't say it. Yeah, do we're, it. They're recording it. Can you not? Oh, I Lydia, and then like uh, she did, what scene was it? Oh, it was the one where you slap him. Yeah. Yeah, she did the like slapping like, uh, um, fuck you and scene. Like the corner of their Airbnb. Yeah, with me. <laughs> They're like, here, come to this corner and do this audition. Yeah. And, um, like, and okay. did such a great job. And I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so, so excited to have someone from there play yeah. that root, that root, like core role. Um, cause, uh, it was important back to what you were referencing before that, like, if we were gonna go to Alabama, that we get it right. And that, like, wherever we went and shot this movie, that it wouldn't be the sort of movie that just kind of takes, uh, what we've seen in the media about that place and just goes like, yeah, we'll do that kind of thing. Like we wanted to go as um, anthropologists with a sense of humor um, and get as many real people behind this camera and on camera. And, um, and, and so like suddenly w one of the leads was like, like from down the street, which was so exciting. Yeah. Well, and I think, I mean, every time you approach a character, hopefully you approach it with authenticity and care and, to play them as honestly as possible, but for me to do this with Southern people that I know very, very well and a spectrum of them, I, it's kind of, especially after being back in the South now for a little while, it's become even more strongly like my, my purpose in this is to tell honest, adequate stories about Southerners, particularly Southern women that I, I feel like haven't, just haven't even really fully been explored. So. And I feel like Lydia represents a few Southern women, but mothers specifically, and the shit that they put up with, is l it's pretty consistent, I think, across all uh, <laughs> regions. So yep. <laughs> but, but rural mothers, too, you know? And just everything that, yeah, they carry on their back. So I don't know, 
those guys were in a buddy comedy. I was definitely in a Chekhovian melodrama, so I was taking it very, very seriously. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it was. A, I mean, he even had to like stop us sometimes and be like, "All right, VIP dance party, shake it off." <laughs> yeah, the day we that was that the day we were shooting the Could the reveal. Stop, yeah. um, you can keep recording now. I don't know if you had to stop. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I get exhausted like shooting heavy scenes. Um, but I want to really make the moment we actually go there appropriately serious, but, like, not the whole day. Um, and so, like, after we'd done it for, like, an hour and a half or two hours, like, it was just, like, weighing on everyone, and we had a dance party, and it was great. Yeah. And we went right great. back into it. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you find the rest of the cast? Um, yeah, a, a, a weird mix of ways. We didn't have a casting director. My... Um, my manager like deserves like a bit of a casting director credit and then like our producers uh melody and ted like did a ton but we it was important to me that everybody either have family from the south or be from the south like um and not be you know someone trying out the accent um and uh so i went on imdb pro and you can like you know it's a t what a ripoff cost way too much money but uh <laughs> But you can, like, put in, like, where people are from and then search actors, and then it's, like, in order of their hotness rating or whatever. <laughs> um, but I would go through, like, everybody from Georgia, everybody from Mississippi, everybody from South Carolina, and, like, and like flag people that, like, looked apart and be like, okay, I guess we'll research that person. Um, but that was how I stumbled upon uh, Sarah Baker because she was from Virginia. Um, and uh, – <laughs> Maybe that's the only person I found that way. <laughs> what a worth waste it. of time. <laughs> Not worth that 120 bucks. Uh, but yeah, we had like locals auditions and really encouraged people to bring friends that were interesting and family and like like trying to not just kind of, um, if you go to an area that doesn't have a huge film community, a lot of times you end up with like the theater folks. Um, and like theater guys in Birmingham like uh, don't have Southern accents. You know, like they're, you know, theater people and um <laughs> so it's kind of like okay how do we get to those weirdos you know <laughs> um so a, a real weird gamut you know some folks i was a fan of already some a couple of my friends are in the movie and did you do rehearsals or did you just kind of how'd you because i mean you get such a consistent you know uh group of naturalistic performances out of people and it's honestly hard to tell sometimes whether people have are trained actors or not, which is I'm sure the object of the game for you is to yeah. make it so that it's not readily uh, obvious who's a trained actor and who isn't. Um, so how do you get that? Hit, get to that. How you want to guess that? who wasn't trained? No, I no. don't. Okay. <laughs> uh, did you like the process? Yes, okay. we um, we d well, Mike and I um, rehearsed. Did you rehearse with? The d the we picked a few guys? big scenes, yeah. and and I like to rehearse like um, kind of halfway there, just to like get the feel of the scene, but like really not like go too hard. But we rehearsed the scene by the car. We did that, um, and we did. Uh, my think my favorite though was was we rehearsed scenes that weren't in the movie. Like we, I love working around the script and just developing relationship. And we we did a, I think a couple scenes that you were just like, what was it? Uh, you guys have. You're about to go out on a date and you're having a fight or something. I forgot about that. He like picked me up and put me on the counter. You remember that? Oh right, <laughs> yeah. He got like angry. Uh huh. No, but it was sweet. He was yeah. like, "I still love you," and I was like, "Okay." Yeah. And but it was interesting because yeah, we like s it was fun because we I started to kind of get a feel of what you were both like as people and um in a way that just doing the dialogue wouldn't have. I found that we it it informed this like extremes uh, like the extremities of our emotional relationship you know and how far these two will maybe push each other sometimes which I think added to the scenes that we did have um, it, it allows you to kind of push those boundaries a little bit but yeah that, that's the only rehearsing that we really did yeah I think one of the one of the big things with this movie for me was um, the, f the folks who really know each other spending a lot of time together more th like um, so like instead of like Andre and Mike didn't rehearse a lot but I, they lived together um, which I think contractually like a SAG actor needed their own you know hotel room and and we were like guys are you okay with it we really want you know you guys to share like a rental home 
Um, so then they would have breakfast together and like on their off days, like be like, what do you want to do, man? And they'd go see a movie. Um, and I think that made, they were real buds and it made me feel left out. Yeah. yeah. Which also is great for your character, which I used, but then you spent tons of time with Poppy, uh-huh. uh, and like you actually were already friends with Poppy, which was really helpful. Poppy and I've done three movies now together. Man, two since this was this the first one. Um, so actually one since this, and then okay. we have another one that we're doing. Uh, one that's coming up. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. We're gonna play vampires. You and Poppy are yeah. vampires. <laughs> <laughs> that's exciting. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's um, I, I I'm a big fan of getting um, capturing unrehearsed moments. Uh, within reason so like it's it's like trying to have enough of a plan that we don't show up and just like have to light some corner we weren't planning on lighting but like um the virginia hadn't done the reveal scene where he says how dick died uh until we were rolling and the camera was pointed at her and it was so fun like to get that first real reaction but like here yeah like so how do you feel yeah um (laughs) And 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 that was exactly why I didn't you know, that that capturing that kind of moment is why I'm scared of rehearsing too much. I didn't rehearse that scene like on my own either at all. I like I read that scene and then was like, okay, got it, clocked. I'm gonna put that aside for now. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't about that. And in this approach to sort of try to catch things uh, in a sort of natural way, how did that inform the cinematography and? what you did in terms of lighting and working with the cinematographer, how did that sort of, what was the sort of a plan and approach for the for the film, or were there any scenes where you had to go off the plan a little bit? Yeah, I mean, um, it was one of the things that attracted me about Ashley and her work was that, like, she's done really polished, gorgeous music videos, but also just, like, unhinged, weird indie films that, like, had zero rehearsal and people were just improvising for three weeks, you know? Um, so I knew that like as a photographer she was um, you know used to the extremes because I I love both but like too much of either kind of drives me crazy Um, so we yeah I think we would talk a lot about like which scenes I wanted to rehearse less and how and 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 how to make sure we were ready to roll with the punches Um, and then which ones like you know we talked a bunch about the lamp scene and how like I wanted it to look great, you know, and and exact and like we just designed that whole bedroom around the lamp scene. We were like, okay, where's the lamp and where's the bureau? Like, and then like that was all that mattered about the bedroom um, was just that like we were gonna enjoy photographing that scene. Um, and um, and that one's a great example of both extremes because then she just went in and did an improvised take where where she was just kind of like up in my, uh, Mike's face. Um, and there's so much deleted material that was so gorgeous. We could do like a five-minute short film about a man in a lamp <laughs> uh, for the DVD. Um, but we used a, p- a few pieces of it, and um, it was it was really fun, like um, working with her because she she loves surprises, but also is really good at planning ahead when that's the the name of the game. Um, is there anything else uh, that you think you took? from the experience of Swiss Army Man into this film, either like things that you wanted to try or things that you didn't want to repeat at all? I mean, there are very obviously very different films, but mm-hmm. is there anything else you feel specifically that you one f- led to the, fun, what, how one fed the other? Yeah, um, yeah, a million things. Like doing, doing a feature film was um, so overwhelming. Uh, Dan Kwan and I did not uh, usually the way we work is we bite off more than we can chew and we like don't really sleep but like you know a music video takes two days and and then at the end you're like oh it was kind of worth it um but uh yeah so we like burnt out we like lost our minds on swiss army man (laughs) um in prep in the shoot and in the edit and so this one there was a lot more like thought into like you know which days to prioritize you know which things are okay to compromise on uh, how to make sure that like I got sleep <laughs> um, but also um, I yeah I mean ev- ev- everything about filmmaking I've learned from Dan Kwan and uh, we learned so much making a feature and uh, 
one of the, I don't know, one of the other anecdotes I'll say is that um, I never appreciated until we were literally editing Swiss Army Man how much, like, one change can ripple through a feature film in a way that, like, you know, it's not quite the same with short form content. Um, and so we'd, we would test screen it with people and, you know, tweak something about the first three minutes and it would change how people reacted to the finale. Um, and a lot of which is, a, is, is just like, is the audience invested? Like, what do they know? What are they confident that they can care about? Um, and so I went into this one like way more aware of that and just kind of like taking notes in a notebook about like, okay, what, what am I, tr where's the audience at and what do they know and how are they feeling here and like what's the important scene? Um, which with Swiss Army Man, I just prioritized everything and kind of overlooked some important stuff <laughs> until the edit room. Yeah. And this one, this one, I mean, there's always mistakes, but <laughs> we figured it out. And then you'll bring it to the next one, and the next one will be better because yeah. of those mistakes. Until right. I get lazy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Until right. I get cushy, and they're <laughs> like, eh, here's some money, do a <laughs> franchise, I don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're going to open it up to questions from the audience. There's a gentleman in red that's always good at a Q&A. If you want to get called first, wear red. Okay, <laughs> please. Hi. Uh, Thank you so much for the movie. I really like all the female characters. I think they're all pretty complex and very well, you know, acted out and very well developed. Uh, my question is, after the success of Swiss Army Man, how, mu how much bargaining right did you have in choosing your next project, and how did you arrive to this one? And about, like, financing and all that stuff. Yeah, how much bargaining right, or how much, just, like, how much power did I have to choose? Yeah, yeah. Like, how was the process after the success? Yeah. Um... I I have a manager. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. And um, uh, he was really upset that I picked this. <laughs> I was like, you know what I want to do? I want to do a movie without Dan Kwan that my friend wrote for less money about horse fucking. <laughs> um, but, I, uh, but I was lucky enough to like be able to turn to... Um, a24, who we had a good working relationship with, and they, they were happy with Swiss Army Man, but also I think happy with Dan and I. Like, we're pretty, um, uh, like, easygoing filmmakers, I think, um, to work with, and um, and say, like, look, I, I, I just want a million dollars, just a million. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it was like, uh, Swiss Army Man was about three million, and I was like, if, like, with a million dollars, I think I could go make a really cool movie back in Alabama, and, and it's a calculated risk, like, I'm not, it wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna go bigger, it was like, um, you know, this would be cool and, and fun, and, and no matter what happens, my career won't be over, hopefully. <laughs> um, but th that's the, that was the, process you know like I'm so lucky to have that person that like trusted me and that I knew already um, and um, we just kind of went straight to them um, and the the bigger picture uh, you know as far as um, was that um, Dan Kwan and I had a bunch of ideas of other movies we wanted to make and we we met some producers and pitched one of them and they were like cool we'll, we'll pay you to write that one so we we started outlining that one and I went and shot this while Dan wrote the first draft of our new movie. Um, so we were, we were kind of, you know, multitasking. We, we kind of always are. Um, and so this was kind of, I, I usually am like really lording over his shoulder when we're writing and I'm really impatient and, and kind of hate when he throws out things that I think are good. Uh, so this time I just left for a few months and he got to just write, a, literally he wrote a 240 page draft. Uh, and it was great. And for a minute, I was like, I guess we're doing a mini series. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're down to like 120 <laughs> now. Um, yes. Sorry. There's a, there's a mic coming. Hold on. Just wait a sec. Um, you spoke about um, a lot of the rehearsal stuff, but um, attacking or going on to the script, how did you? Pr um, work through that like um like what was on screen what um I'm try okay sorry what I'm trying to say is from what was on screen how much of that was on the page totally yeah um a lot of it um Billy is like uh my favorite writer and I think one of the things reasons I love his writing is because like there's um there's so much specificity 
to like the way people talk and exactly how they move and like um you know who who takes the coffee and who passes the coffee and like exactly at what point in the scene does his knee start bouncing like he just wrote all that in there which is like such a gift you know as like a filmmaker to just be like oh he, a guy wrote it and i like it like <laughs> and cause sometimes that stuff can get in the way where you're like oh that's not what i would do here but it, all of it felt very musical and very natural to yeah all the little weird stuff yeah, he, yeah, he really picks and like chooses. Like, yeah, it's not like here's what every character in the scene looks like in this scene. He's like, he's just like, no, the coffee. That's what matters. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of like odd, like quirks and reactions that you would think an actor is just coming up with, but a lot of it is what is scripted, and you kind of shape your character around those oddities, which are really fun. Yeah. I'm trying to think, like, yeah, I feel like you you were pretty tight to the script. Uh, Andre well, Bill was Billy less and I so. actually talked a lot we we because I, I like to have someone i can get like cerebral with and then yeah. someone i or th and then just let it all go and do do the work and and you know use the rest of the stuff but um but he would entertain that part of me because he loves talking to and he's great at script. it it was one of the valuable things <laughs> it like is, yeah like so often a director you know is told like you need to talk through your actors about everything and then you get on the day and it's like you're pressed for time and you're busy trying to figure out what to do about the rattlesnake in the chimney. Uh, and and Billy was like, yeah, he yeah. would just spend a lot of time with each actor because he had... It was a great relationship. I felt like we all... Um, th there was a little bit of a non-traditional like, breakdown of hierarchy crap on this set that I think really allowed everyone to do good, open, trusting work. Um, so, yeah. Um, what was the original <laughs> question? Oh, <laughs> what else was on the script? Yeah. So yeah, a, a whole lot of it. Um, and um, and and it was also like he had refined this script over the years because it was um, he he knew after college that he wanted to be a screenwriter and he was writing multiple scripts for years, but this was um, his favorite, and so he would always kind of come back to it and try to like uh, refine it because it was the one that was kind of his calling card. <laughs> so there's like a bunch of development executives in Hollywood they're like that got made <laughs> right now um, I would say Andre though probably has the most loose yeah. dialogue yeah though. Andre came in like um, any movie that Andre Highland is in he's like improvising all of his dialogue so like this one I think is like kind of like impressive that like 60% of it is pretty tightly scripted um, and even Andre was like man it feels like Billy's inside my brain like he knows how I talk um, but like you know Billy didn't say tight you know, in the script, nearly as much as Earl said tight. Um, and Earl didn't even vape. That was like, you know, <laughs> Andre <laughs> Andre got cast, and I was like, what do you think about your character? And he's like, I think he'd have, like, a Caesar cut and vape a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that was his that was his backstory. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I and, and we kind of fell in love with Earl and, and actually, like, started rewriting based on, like, what Andre would say sometimes in his auditions or in his rehearsals because he would forget, you know, um, and we'd be like, no, 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 there's that thing you said. We're not really advocating working for Andre right now. <laughs> with no, he's Andre. incredible, <laughs> you know, but like, yeah, he's a loose cannon. That's kind of the fun <laughs> of him. Um, but it, so it was different than improv, you know, it was actually like, um, you know, we were collecting our favorite bits from him and we'd be like, oh, where can we sneak that in? Like, that's such a good, you know, turn of f phrase that Andre kept used the other day, but, you know, we didn't keep in the cut or whatever. And one more question. Um, is it right here, please? In the right there? No, no, it's taking everyone out. It's just high stakes. Okay. <laughs> yes, right here in the back. I have a black t shirt. Hi. Uh, first, I just want to say uh, Swiss Army Man is genuinely my favorite movie of all time. So thank you for oh, blessing thank me. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. And so I've totally, uh, so I remember like a popular phrase kind of thrown out with uh, that movie is that the first fart is supposed to make you laugh, the last one is supposed to make you cry. I was wondering tonally, uh, did you have any sort of similar uh, approach in terms of how you wanted this movie to affect the audience? Because I never really expected One Man, One Horse, the movie to be as emotionally complex as it was. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, if you could just speak to that, your approach to the tone with this one, given that... Did Nickelback goal. make you cry? <laughs> uh, somehow, yes. Oh, cool. That was the goal. It was the same, same thing. It was just like stained makes you laugh, nickel makes, makes you cry. Um, 
that analogy equates farting to Nickelback, just so everyone's <laughs> clear. Yeah, <laughs> it's not the first. Just like a human experience is very primal. Um, <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this is, I think the, m the stories that attract me are kind of like scary, big swing stories. And so like this one was like doing a fart drama, like for years, Dan and I were like, why are we doing this? But like, um, but it also made us laugh and, um, and it was a challenge. And so similarly, like uh, a heartbreaking horse fucking movie, like, like uh, I could never stop thinking about it, you know? Like ever since I knew Billy, ever since I read the first draft, I was always like, God, if someone ever makes Billy's movie like it, like um, I, f I find these characters relatable and their their actions are the least relatable thing imaginable and like what a what a feat you know in storytelling to like um make a joke you know frighteningly relatable and like um so yeah i mean this one's a similar like empathy game you know like I, th I love that movies are capable of um making me empathize with people that i wouldn't normally um those are my favorite movies some movies you know have lower ambitions and um and and yeah, this is like the most insane empathy game I've ever seen a screenwriter attempt, and um, and the the roller coaster of just kind of like you you know you start and you're just laughing at rednecks, and then you get to know them and they're kind of like he's a loving father and they're scared and like the, oh suddenly you like relate with these criminals even though they're they're terrible at what they do and then. Um, and then you find out what they did and you just relate with them even less than before. <laughs> and, and then to try to pull you back from that and by the end be like, oh no, I have something in common with these guys, <laughs> you know, like, um, cause we all keep secrets or have had secrets kept from us. And like, um, uh, so that, you know, that journey w again, like the similar to farts, it was like a, r a really fun, challenging thing, you know, to like, to play with something that like shouldn't make you feel things, you know? So, so I hope you like this one too, but I'm glad you like Swiss Army Man. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that is our time. So please join me in thanking Daniel and Virginia. Congratulations on the film. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>